I'm just going to open this in a prayer because I feel like I don't pray before we worship. So I'm going to do that. Lord, um, thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to just be in this space, um, to just come together um, under under your name and just worship you and um, through, through music and giving and the word. And God, I just pray that um, you would just be with us this morning and... Open our hearts to receive your love, God. See you anyway, pray, amen. So uh, if you want, stand with me, or you could sit whatever you whatever you want. Yeah. I don't I don't want to make you feel obligated to stand. My God, you reign forever and ever. How great is your name? Every word of worship in one accord, yes. 
I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, thank, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to take a little time right now, Jesus, to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. I just want to take a little time right now to say thank you, Lord, yes, for all you've done.
We are starting our, our Christmas series, Christmas series next, week. next week, and I have a special, have a gift, special gift for every for individual, every, every household, household in this place. In this place. Uh, we, uh, are we are going to give out, it's called The Star, the star A, Journey, a to Journey to Christmas. To Christmas. I, every household gets a book, it's a devotional book, 30 days of devotions, and I believe it's going to be a great way for for us to bring in Christmas together, okay? So every day, the goal is is to is read to one of these one a day, of the day uh, up until up Christmas, until Christmas for, Advent. for Advent, and, and today, today would be the day you would start reading them, okay? So it's got very cool little sections in there about Christmas, about Advent. Uh, I already started marking mine up. So before I get started with my message, I'm, I'm going a little out of line on you, Vince, so don't <laughs> just spare it. Uh, when I was doing studies and reading this morning, grabbed my heart on this. It says Psalm 130. So we're going to read today the first day together. And it says, I wait for the Lord, for my whole being waits, and in, in his word I put my hope. Amen? So it goes on to say, in the age when drone delivery is a reality, that's so crazy, drone delivery, and information, and information is constantly, is constantly at our fingertips. At our fingertips. We, become we become accustomed to uh, immediate, uh, immediate gratification. gratification. We get impatient, we get impatient with slow internet, slow internet 
and microwave and ovens. ovens. I'm not a big I'm fan, fan of anyways, but, but uh, slow, internet slow internet makes me mad. Makes me mad. So, so the idea the of idea a long of wait long or a lengthy journey, journey doesn't, doesn't hold much appeal on the surface. But perhaps it is the journey, the process of the long wait. That's exactly what we need. We need time to recognize the depths of our need and to allow hope to bring in our hearts. We need space to block out the many distractions of our lives. We need to quiet ourselves in the darkness so that we won't miss the arrival of the light of the world. We need to wait and watch for the miracle of the birth of Jesus when the God of the universe entered our world in order to transform us through his love. Advent is just that, a long period of waiting, expecting, and looking forward to the coming of Jesus. In a rushed world, Advent is a deep breath that allows us to pause and then take each purposeful step on the journey as we follow the star toward Bethlehem. So we begin the season of waiting and hope in our hearts. Maybe our sense of hope is only the faintest glimmer right now of a mere spark. It's okay. Allow the long wait to be a place where hope grows, where it can build with each passing day and create space in your heart to receive the light of the world. And if you notice at the bottom, they have different questions. Um, and that's how you reflect through these questions with your family. You can do it as a devotional with your family, one on whatever, however you want to do it. Uh, he says, how do you guys feel about a long wait? Anybody like him? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like just get to the message, would you? Part of the message, is, of the that. message is that being thankful. Being so thankful. this so is a, this a is gift a from us to us you. To oh, anyone, if you can get, if you have your Bible with you, awesome. If not, we have the words up here. But I am going to be preaching from Galatians chapter two or three today, verses fifteen through twenty-one. Um, I'm excited about this Christmas, though. It's our first Christmas as a church. It's our first Christmas election. Oh what, oh, what did I say? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, Colossians. Colossians. Thank, you. Thank you. This is why I have this good, people, have in good people in here. Colossians. Colossians. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did, I did I say Galatians? I had that on my I mind. That was part mind. of what I was part reading today. Colossians, Colossians chapter, chapter 3, three verses 15, 15 through 15 21. 21. I'm glad you guys, I'm glad you guys all know how to read, and I don't. So it says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you can, you, of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with wisdom through psalms, hymns, songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, Submit your, yourselves, yourselves to your husbands as it is, as fitting, it is to fitting to the Lord. Husbands, husbands love, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. With them. Children, Children, obey your obey parents and everything, everything for this, this pleases the Lord. the Lord. And fathers, do fathers, not embitter your children, your children or they will become, they will become discouraged. discouraged. Let's pray really, really quick. Father God, as we dive into your word today, Father God, open our hearts and our ears and our minds and our souls to your your message that you gave me today that the churches around the world are speaking right now father god about you let let every ear be attentive every heart be receptive and every mind be focused on your blessings father god In jesus name amen uh as followers of jesus christ is that what we are here we are followers right when we become Followers, followers, though, there's a saying there's that you saying become born, born again, again, right? right? That's your first that's your time first you're time experiencing Christ, Christ in your life, you're, you're accepting, your life, you're accepting him. him. And when that happens, happens we become a new creation, creation in Christ's Christ eyes. Christ Christ. Am, I right? Am I right? And because, and of, because, this, because of this, we love, we love who, do we love who do we love then? We love Jesus, we love don't, Jesus we? don't we? And we put and our we faith put in him. And when we put our faith in him, we want to live differently for him. Does that make sense? So my message is called, we live loving Jesus, live changed. And I, uh, 
And there's a reason why, because when we live changed, it's for the better. We're determined when we give our lives to Christ to live a life of honor and glory for Jesus. We are intentional, uh, at least hopefully you're intentional, to, uh, to live a Christ-exalted life now. Uh, there's holy deliber deliberateness in everything you do throughout life. Why are some Christians so wonderfully positive and fun to be around? Why are some Christians not fun to be around? Why are some always negative and difficult to be around? There's different reasons. And but but what I well, we're gonna dive into some of this today. What makes some Christians so much fun to be around though is they practice putting the peace of God in their life. Without it, yes, you're gonna be negative. Without it, you're gonna be difficult to be around. Okay, Christians, we it says we're supposed to have a transformed life. And when we do, this transformed life glorifies Jesus to the next level because we're living our, our, our life exalted for him. Christians are supposed to live in peace. And when I say that, I don't mean live in peace like we're going to get along every day of our lives. No, no, no. That, that's a lie from the devil. We have different personalities, don't we? Sandra, you are different than me, right? Linda, you are different than me. We... Living in peace does not mean that, yes, we're always going to be in harmony. There are going to be times that me and Vince bump heads, and when we do, that's okay. Why? Because we do it lovingly. We love each other still, but we have to work past it. And how do you work past it? Is through your actions. Do you shut down on yourself, or do you shut down on that person when you're not in agreement with them? Are there weird, awkward silences between you and that person? It's, and it's, it's okay to be like that at times but you got to be able to work together despite the differences in life in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 I'm not going to read it to you but it's called the love chapter it's a great way to learn how to love someone or something or some being I don't know if you're supposed to love a thing but <laughs> but some being Right? And you work through this. And by doing this, it helps us close uh, ourselves with love, which leads to peace between individuals and among the members of the body of believers. So, in order to figure out how to do this, we're going to unpack really quick three, um, I believe, proven ways to let the peace of Christ rule inside your heart. Okay, the first one is to let your life overflow with thankfulness. This whole couple, last couple of weeks, what have I been talking about? Being thankful. What have I asked a lot of you? Uh, what are you thankful for? Almost daily I ask some of you guys. What are you thankful for? Did you know that the early Christians, they had, <clears throat> they had this book in the, old, in the old days. They just didn't have the full book. This is the Bible. They had the Old Testament and a lot and how they learned, they were able to read it. They, they memorized a lot of it, but they didn't have the New Testament. They were writing the New Testament. That's what the early church was doing. They were, they were, we were writing the, the New Testament. So a lot of the stories from the New Testament, they didn't have. They didn't have self-help books. They didn't have all these Christian books out there to help them. What they had was word of mouth and how they learned was from Traditions, word of mouth, how did things happen? And part of how they and how they they memorized a lot of these stories and stuff like that is they put it to, to worship. They put it to music. And that helped them learn the stories about God that way. And so I, I totally believe uh, to overflow with thankfulness, God created us to be worshipers. Am I right with that? We're supposed to be thankful people, aren't we not? Thankful people can worship wholeheartedly. Why? Because they have gratitude inside of them. They have gratitude inside their hearts and they're open to God's peace and that enables us to love one another. In fact, I, I believe that thankfulness is the spirit behind the worship. Because if I was not thankful, why should I be worshiping him? Right? And, and, and it's hard to do. An attitude of gratitude fuels the worship um bless you but 
Let's look at the passage found in uh, uh, Galatians 2. I almost said Galatians because of you. <laughs> it says in chapter, in verse 6, it says, So then, just as you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in faith, as you were taught and over, overflowing with thankfulness. And Paul continues to say in 1 Thessalonians, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. It doesn't say, it says God's will. That's his will for us. To give thanks to our maker daily. See, there's a couple of things to help us increase uh, our thankfulness to the Lord. And one of them, we're going to take an inventory right now. So on your pieces of paper, get them out, uh, your notes and stuff like that. I want you to start taking an inventory of your relationships, memories, abilities, your family, anything you are grateful for, even material possession. So I want you to, what I'm asking you to do is to make a gratitude list. Start it right now. Take a few minutes. Write down, if all you can think of are your, the first three things that you are thankful for, do that right now. As you guys keep doing it, I'm going to keep talking for a minute. Um, if you have a phone, on your phone, like my phone's got a, a place for notes, that you can just add them onto that all the time. And you can update that list all the time. I have a little book at home. I went on a retreat many, many years ago. And one of it, it was about uh, why do you love your wife? A hundred different ways. And I add to this. Not so much daily, monthly though. Uh, no, 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 Christina. Uh, it's just I forget to do it. But I'm, I'm not. I have a page. I know exactly where the book is. I leave it in the same spot because when I think of something, I pick it up and I put something else down. And I go back to it because it helps me to um, show gratitude for my wife when I go and read it because I remember all the things and why I fell in love with her and why I'm still in love with her and why I wanted to do the rest of my life with her. Does that make sense? So that's why I said put it on your phone now. We have, uh, we, you can do things on your phone that makes it a little more easier. Um, sometimes I'm still old school and I like pieces of paper and pens, but it's fun. It, makes it, it can make it exciting and it gives you a positive attitude when you, when you do stuff like that. So, um, and the reason I, I'm telling you guys to do this is not just to have it. I want you to use this inventory, this list, as your prayer of gratitude to God. Okay? On Sundays before we get here, because who lives a crazy life? Nonstop, right? We all do, right? But the, well, you need to be still in the Lord and let him speak to us. So I'm asking you, before you get here on Sundays from now on, even if it's in the car, Start worshiping him before you walk in the door. And how you can do that, stop rushing, just quiet yourself. Go sit, be quiet, whatever. So you got to wake up 10 minutes early and, and open that, that list. And that's your prayer of gratitude now. And you, and you pray about that. You reflect on why you are thankful. Declare Sundays as your thanks, faith, and hope day. Celebrate God's goodness to him and ask in prayer all your needs for that week in, in that moment of time with him, okay? That's one of my um, things I'm going to be working on these next 30 days leading up to Christmas. It's a new habit. Starting a new habit. Secondly, I want to finish, finish this statement. I need to thank blank in your life. Who do you need to thank right now? Like I, th I thanked Tracy for marrying me yesterday on the way home, and she started laughing at me. She's like, I don't think you've ever asked, you said that to me before. And I was just like, I'm thankful every day that she married me. That she took a chance on some goofball and then saw something good inside of him and tried to get that spark going. But I'm thankful for her every day. So I need you to, who are you thankful for? I'm thankful for everyone in this room. I'm thankful for my guys in the back that don't get any credit ever. <laughs> they do what they do to make this look nice up here for our worship. I'm thankful for a lot of things, but who do you need to thank right now in your life? The second proven way to let the peace of Christ rule in your heart is let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. That's literally what it says in that verse when I read it to you. 
See, there's no other way to let the word of God into you if you never open this up. If you don't know what this says, how are you supposed to get close with him? Prayer helps, don't get me wrong. But when you read this, the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you and he starts revealing things to you. So let the word of Christ dwell in you richly by practicing and making a daily practice of purposely reading the Bible. I know people that just open the Bible and read it, okay, but they didn't learn anything. They didn't get close to God. Sometimes that happens, but when you open this, ask, Lord, reveal something to me today. Have your spare, grab me. And if you don't have a Bible, we have plenty of them. Go grab one. And if you want a special Bible, I'll buy you one. Why? Because I, this is how, this is what caught my heart to get to know God. I, I, I never read the Bible in my life. And I went from Catholic school, from first grade all the way to senior in high school. They gave me a Bible. I went to church every Sunday, but I never actually knew what this said. And when I opened it and started reading it, It changed my life. (laughs) I saw truth come out. So I don't know your daily practices, but how Tracy and I, uh, we let the the word of the Lord uh, dwell in us richly is through Isaiah 50, verse 4. It says, this is a way we practice it. The sovereign Lord has given me his words of wisdom so that I know how to confront the wary. Morning by morning. He wakens me and opens my understanding to his will. On a daily basis, it says by morning, every morning by morning, it's a practice. Tracy, I know when we get Tracy to school early on purpose, not because I have to, she gets to school at eight o'clock so she can have a half an hour with God. I, on the other hand, drop her off, drop off Sarah, put my headphones in, and I listen to the Bible for about 15, 20 minutes because Abby's sleeping, so I get time with the Lord on my quiet time. But it's a daily-to-daily practice that we make it a habit. And it's not a habit. I don't call it. I'm, I'm, because it teaches us about him. Does that make sense? And the reason we do that is all through life, don't, do we not find people and they have problems in life and they come to get advice from you or they come looking for you well you know what I'd rather have biblical advice from somebody than just word (laughs) than just mouth right you can find every answer in that bible in that book about life if you look for it how do I know because I've done that (laughs) because I've been lost many times in my life and God's always directed me and then I was able to go direct somebody else with his encouraging words Does that make sense so I ask you I'm, I'm going to ask you for two commitments I'm giving I'm asking a lot today in today's service one the first one is commit to read your Bible every day up until Christmas and be specific now I'm saying up to Christmas because we're in that season I don't mean stop after Christmas I'm just giving you a, a, a set time, okay? And after that, you should just continually do it. Like I said, I'm reading the Bible in a year. I'm almost done with it. Um, and plus, I, and if I don't get to read it or listen to it, there's a Bible. If you walk through my house, you'll find a Bible in almost every room of my house. Why? Because if I get, I don't want to say bored, if I, if I have downtime, I just pick it up and start reading it. And, and that's just something I do. The second one I'm asking you to do is to commit to reading the Christmas devotional we just handed out to you. So if you haven't got that, make sure before you leave, you go get, go get the star book in the back. Um, so the third proven way. So those are the commitments I'm asking you guys to do, okay? The third proven way to let the peace of Christ rule in your heart is to have healthy relationships fill your life. Straight from, the, straight from the verse, it says, have healthy relationships fill your life. I'm going to ask you a question. What is a biblically a healthy home? Anybody want to shout something out? Or you just want to wait for answers? A healthy home. No what? No strife. 
That's the very first one I had. It's a house. You, Sandra, you're right. You're going to have strife in a house, though. It's how you deal with that strife. See, a home where everyone's in the right relationship with God and with each other. That means if you have a brother or sister that you don't like, fix it. If you have a sibling in your family, that's fix it. Get right with God and the relationships in your life. Uh, another one is 360 degrees of warm, loving, wholesome, relating with each other. Like you said, we're not all going to have perfect days inside a home. You're, you're, to live in peace, we are going to have some struggles every now and then. It's how we deal with them. And one of them is no secret sin in your family's life. You, if you're a family, you should be an open book that you guys can talk with each other all the time, that you don't need to have secret sin in your life because what happens with that sin, it opens huge doors for the enemy when you have sin in your life and no one knows about it, okay? So whatever, there's a, there's a verse that says, whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in that. Right? It means everything we do, we're bringing honor to, to God and every aspect and activity in our lives. Some days, am I better at it than others? Yes. <laughs> but some days, I'm, you know, you, you strive to do that. <clears throat> As a Christian, we represent Christ everywhere you go. Wherever you go, whatever you say, whatever you do, I got a question for you. What impression do you make on people? Is it Christ-like or is it not? When they see you and meet you. Is it loving or is it hateful? Is it disruptive or is it peaceful? We see a lot of pain, don't we? And hurt nowadays in families, don't we, across the world. They're living, but that's not God's plan for us. You, you do realize that, right? See, God wants us to live healthy, thriving lives and have thriving families and thriving homes. It says in verse 18, wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as it is fitting in the Lord. I'm not even going to hit that subject. <laughs> no, I'm going to read all these and you'll understand. It says, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Wife submit. It does not mean belittle yourself. It does not, I, I do want to hit this. It does not mean to be stepped on. Because if you go to the next verse, it says, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. That means it's compatibility. It means you're working together to, okay, my husband made a decision. I'm going to follow it today. Some days it's not always right. And some days you're supposed to, hey, that doesn't sound right. You're supposed to work together and become one. It says in the Bible, two become one. That means two become one, they're one person. They're working for the better of the family's lives. That makes sense? And it says, husbands, love your wives. Do not be harsh with them. Children, where are all the kids in here? There we got two. All right. Obey your parents in everything you do for this pleases the Lord. It's actually a commandment. And it's the only commandment with a promise on it. It says if you do this, you will have long life. It doesn't matter what age you are. You're a, you're a child to somebody, aren't you? You, you got made somehow. <laughs> so either they're alive or dead or whatever, but you are, we are all children. And it goes on to say, Fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. I struggle with that one with, with Sarah sometimes. I think she's older than what she is, and I treat her differently, and then I got to realize, ah, she's still only five. <laughs> so it goes on to say, those slaves, obey your earthly masters and everything and do it, not only when their eyes are on you, so you'll carry favor with them, but with sincerity of heart and reverence to the Lord. See, Paul, in this short little four stanza, five stanza, he's giving us instructions, three basic instructions on how to live thriving lives in relationships. One, it says, he starts with husbands and wives. Then he goes to parents and children. Then he goes from owners to workers. Who's a husband and wife in here? Who has kids in here? 
who has a job because that's what he's talking about. How to have three aspects of your life which are throughout your whole life forever, aren't they? Once you have a kid, you can't just get rid of the kid. When you get married, you're not supposed to get divorced, are you? You're supposed to work through it, right? And, and most of us need to make money, don't we? So if I, gotta, if I need to make money, I have to do this basically the rest of my life. I should learn how to, to live a happy, peaceful life, right? And his instructions go on to be, say, to submit. So the first instruction is to submit in love, to work together. The second is to obey and encourage. And the third, work hard and be fair. Our efforts sometimes don't always get looked upon, do they? And then we feel sad about it. It's understandable. But if we submit in love, if we obey and encourage, and we work hard and be fair, God will bless you for this. Why? Because these are qualities of him. Think about your home and your family for a moment right now. Ask yourself, is everyone in your, in your family or your home in a great relationship with God and with each other? Is there any kind of secret sin in your life or at your home or at your work that's opening huge doors for the enemy to walk in? Because I want to challenge you on two home improvements right now. They're projects for yourself. But the first one is I will treat anyone or I will treat another person in my family better. The question on the end of that though is how? Sometimes I believe God, it's funny as pastors, I'm learning, they, when he gives you a word, sometimes it's meant for you as much as it's meant for the congregation. Because sometimes I don't always treat Tracy and Sarah and Abby with the utmost love as I should. I love them, but sometimes you, you wouldn't see that. So that's one way I'm going to that I don't lose my temper as easy. I don't in, in show more love. I'm very open about my life with you guys. There's a reason why. If I'm supposed to lead you, I have to be an example for you, correct? And I'm not perfect just like you aren't. I'm not perfect just like you aren't. So there's ways that I need to correct my life as you need to correct your life. So I'd rather be open with you than have something hidden. Does that make sense? Why? Because you're my sheep and I'm supposed to shepherd you. The second one, I will treat myself better how? All of us need some TLC, don't we? Either through eating or health or wealth or whatever, but we all need some TLC. How are you going to treat yourself better? Hopefully... It's by reading the Bible every day and letting the word get inside your heart and, and, and growing in God's spirit inside of you that that will help part of it. So I'm going to conclude real fast. Actually, is I'm sorry to do this. I forgot to ask you to do this. and Come up if you'd like. Well, it doesn't matter if you like or don't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Huh? Oh, the last one. I'm sorry. The last one. I will treat myself better. And how? I, I, yes, I'll give you. I'll, I'll tell you the app to go to. You version, and you can download it on your phone. It's awesome. That's the, that's what I use. You version. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. So let. Uh, so we're gonna close out in a couple minutes, but let love. Let's let us love Jesus and live changed. Can we agree to that? It should be a goal of all of ours as Christ followers to become more like Christ daily. There's a verse in 2 Corinthians verse uh, chapter 3, verse 18. It says, we are being changed to be like Jesus. This change, is, this change in us brings ever greater glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. I think we forget sometimes because you may be walking with Christ 
for a long time. It might be a short time. It might be a medium length of time you've been walking with him. But I think those words, sometimes we forget that when we do get and give our lives to Christ, we are supposed to stay on that path and be examples to him. See, it's my prayer for all of us in this room that we'll see that when people see us and meet us and, and greet us, that they'll see uh, a wonderful and great transformation that Jesus made in our lives. And that'll attract people to him because of that. And that's my prayer for a lot of this. They, when they meet you, Christina, they see Christ just come from you. From you, Persevere, when they meet you, they see his love just overflowing out of you. See, let if we let the love of Christ radiate in our lives, three things happen. It's, it, let it overflow with thanksgiving inside of you, thankfulness out of you. The word of Christ will dwell in you richly if you practice what I, I asked you to do, to read daily. And healthy relationships will start forming in your life because you'll be looking for them. Living a healthy, joyful, and transformed life for Christ is the best way to live. It's not always the easiest way to live. But it all starts from the beginning. And that beginning is fully committing your life to Jesus. Today, uh, you, you can begin that relationship with Jesus that will change your life for the better. You may be a great sinner, but that's all right, because Jesus is a great Savior. Do you want to begin a relationship with Jesus today? He wants you more than, more than you even know, first off. He loves you, and he's knocking at your heart right now. He's here with us right now, and he wants to forgive you entirely and for eternity and completely of all your sins that you've had. If that's inside your heart today and you want to put your faith in Jesus Christ, I want to invite you in a minute before I just pray a simple prayer with me. But first, I want to read two verses from Romans, uh, chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. It says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's the gospel. For with the heart of one believes and is justified and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Amen. If you want that new life in Christ through Jesus, I want to ask you to pray that prayer. This simple life-changing prayer with me, okay? Everyone just kind of close your eyes. If you want to pray, pray it out loud. I'll go slow. Lord Jesus, I want to start following you today. I put my faith in you today. I'm sorry for my sins. I humbly ask you to forgive me. I'm finished with selfish living. I love you and I want to live a changed life for you. I receive your free gift of salvation. Make me new and make me clean. I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I pray all these things. In your marvelous name, amen.